Okay, this morning what we're going to do is we're going to take a protracto view and what we'd like to do is demonstrate how we put the dots on the patient's face so that we know precisely where to take our vertical and horizontal crosshair when taking a protracto view. And so we have Jason who's posing as a patient right now and we're going to find the middle of the maxillary sinus uh, on him and I'll show you how that's done. We'll go ahead and palpate the orbit, the very bottom inferior aspect of the orbit and when it starts to turn up, we're not going to follow it. We're just going to put a dot right there in the corner of that orbit. Now we're going to palpate toward the corner of the mouth. And we're going to palpate over this round bump. And I get right there, and that's the bottom of the maxillary sinus. I bring my finger up, and it wants to bounce against that, uh, that maxillary sinus. I'll put a dot right there to represent the bottom of that maxillary sinus. So there's the bottom, there's the top. I'll split the difference and drag my pencil parallel to the floor. That's where my horizontal crosshair needs to go when I'm taking a protracto view. I'm going to do this on both sides because we're going to take two protractos, a right and a left. So there's the lateral aspect of the orbit. Well, there's the top part of the maxillary sinus, which is the lateral aspect of the orbit as it turns up bottom of the maxillary sinus right there. We'll put a dot. We'll go ahead and drag our pencil parallel to the floor, kind of splitting the difference between those. And then we also want to be able to go with our vertical collimator crosshair through a certain aspect of the orbit. And uh, I'll be demonstrating how we arrive at that uh, at another time. But let me go ahead and mark those points. Right now, I've determined that when we shoot through the right condyle, or the right superior tibular surface of atlas, we're going to go through the left orbit. And where that horizontal crosshair, or where that condyle line passes through the orbit, right there is where we want to be able to mark a dot where our vertical collimator crosshair has to go. So I'm going to demonstrate how we find the medial aspect of the orbit and the lateral aspect of the orbit, divide it in two, split that in two, come up with exactly where we need to put that, uh, that dot that represents where the vertical collimator crosshair must pass. So in this particular case, I'm going to place the pad of my thumb toward the eyeball and wedge my thumb right in there and make sure that my thumbnail is going straight up and down and then follow straight up my thumb and mark a dot above the orbit. That's the medial aspect of the orbit. I'm also going to change my thumb and have the pad of this hand pushing against the eyeball, coming straight in looking at the patient. Don't go around to the side. Come straight in. Move that orbit, that eyeball just a little bit and then mark straight up above my thumbnail which is vertical. I have now represented the medial and the lateral aspect of the orbit. I'll come straight on, mark a dot between those two. That represents the center. As I'm looking at this orbit and looking at that orbit, I realize that when I'm transferring my points from my base posterior to the patient, that the right side on the paper is not the right side of the patient. So I have flipped this around so that as I'm looking at this, this R represents the paper flipped upside down and that dot represents where the vertical collimator crosshair goes and that dot represents where the vertical crosshair goes but it depends on the respective orbit that I'm going through. In this particular case, as I've marked the orbit, the one that we're really concerned with here on the right side, which is now this right side of the patient, that condyle line comes through the very lateral aspect of that orbit. So I'm just going to transfer that dot right above that orbit. That's where my vertical collimator crosshair will need to pass when I'm shooting through this orbit. Let's go ahead and mark the other orbit. There's the lateral aspect coming up. There's the medial aspect coming up. There's the center. There's the medial part of that center. And as I transfer this dot Right here, there's the midline, there's the quarter section. I'll come between a midline and a quarter section. 
there's the midline, there's the quarter section, I'll come right between those two, and that's where my vertical collimator crosshair will have to pass when I'm shooting through this maxillary sinus. Okay, we note that on this particular example, the condyle convergence on the right is 26 degrees, and as we shoot down along the 26 degrees, the part of the margin that we want to see, if we shoot right down along there, the true lateral aspect of that orbit, or of that of that margin, the anterolateral margin of the condyle and atlas will be coming through this part of the patient's face. We'll be missing the maxillary sinus entirely. This one has to be taken as a stereo. Whereas when we take the left, we find that that aspect of the lateral margin of the bone actually comes through the middle of the maxillary sinus, despite the fact that we're shooting right through here. So. We're going to take that into account. Our right protracto is going to need to be a stereo. Our left protracto is going to be a flat. And let's go ahead and set, to set our patient up so that we're shooting first the right protracto as a stereo and our left protracto. Now let's go ahead and look at the protracto clamp here first. And um, the protracto clamp, we have changed out for the other head clamp. We put it in the center of the bucky, and we're tightening this down and tightening this area down here so that it's firm. The protractile clamp works like this. If you loosen the top button, you can move this in and out. This is the yoke. The yoke has ear pointers and head clamps, pads, that allow us to clamp the patient in. These ear pointers will be parallel to our yoke at all times, and these are what we want to point to the posterior wall of the auditory meatus where our earplug line was established when we marked our base posterior ear view. We also can loosen this knob and we can turn this to whatever degree setting we want. We know that for the right protracto view the patient was turned 26 degrees because the condyle is converged 26 degrees. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to turn this so that it gets to about 26 degrees. Or close there too. And what I need to do is have my patient sitting up straight and tall, and I need to mark the patient so that he has all the appropriate dots on the front of the face, and also I need to mark the transverse processes because that is going to factor into this protractive view as well. We'll just have the patient looking straight ahead. Palpate for the TP. If you can't find the TP, palpate the lateral inferior anterior aspect of the mastoid and put a dot right there. We're also going to put a mark on this transverse process. And when we take our protracto view, it's very similar to a nasium. We're going to be shooting down at an angle like this, going through one maxillary sinus in the opposite TP. When we take a right protractive view, patients turn to the right, so we'll be going through the left maxillary sinus, through the opposite TP, hitting the bucky in the center. As the ear pointers are lined up on both sides to the posterior wall of the auditory meatus, and we would have marked this patient for normal head carriage. He'd have a dot here, and he'd have a dot here. All that would be lined up. We're going to go ahead and represent what that would look like had we taken the patient through normal head carriage. And let's go ahead and bring our patient into position. The patient will have hands on the lap, be sitting up straight and tall, be looking eye level straight ahead. We're going to approximate the bucky center to where it would be if we were coming through these points. We'd like to hit it about the center. We'll drop this down, we'll raise the head clamp up. Once that's turned to 26 degrees, we'll put the patient's shoulder nearest the bucky to the bucky till it touches. We'll go ahead then and loosen up our head clamp, and we're going to take this ear pointer with this turn 26 degrees, and we're going to line it up with the posterior wall of the auditory meatus, or in this case, the tip of the tragus. It's lining up to the tip of the tragus on this side. I need it to be doing the same thing on the opposite side. As I put my pointer in, I see that this part, this auditory meatus is too anterior, but about a half inch, so I'm going to rotate the patient. I'll 
see if this one still lines up. That one's still lined up. That one is almost, but not quite. Rotate them a little bit more. Make sure that one's lined up. It is. That one's lined up. So we have our patient turn 26 degrees. I'll pull these air pointers out of the way. And now what I want to do is I want to bring my tube in and I want to aim it through the maxillary sinus and the TP on the opposite side and hit the bucky in the center as my vertical collimator crosshair goes through that point. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my tube in. Angle it down. And raise it up until my string, as I'm looking at my string, my string goes to the middle of the maxillary sinus and through the TP on the opposite side. And then I'm just going to angle this down until the vertical or the horizontal crosshair does essentially the same. Okay, when it goes through this point and this point, it needs to hit the center of the bucky. Wonder if we could turn off our light for a second. So our horizontal crosshair goes through the center of the maxillary sinus, through the TP on the opposite side, and hits the bucky in the center. We'll move our patient until the vertical collimator crosshair goes through um, the point marked above his orbit. Now there's also one more consideration, and that is we'd like to get all the tilt out of the patient. And when I look at the patient and take out the tilt, I'm going to lean your body. Be a statue, but just lean your whole body this way. Just trying to get that vertical straight up and down. Then I'm going to go ahead and bring him until that horizontal crosshair goes through to that point that we have above the orbit. I'm going to lock my chair. And at this point, I'd like to just bring in the head clamps and loosen this up so I can push it back to match the patient just a little bit. And then lock them in place. Not just a second here. Okay, so a vertical collimator cross here is going through the indicated dot above the patient's brow. A horizontal cross here is going through the middle of the maxillary sinus, through the TP on the opposite side and hitting the buck in the center. The normal head carriage dots, this one to that one, are lined up. The ear pointers are pointing to the tragus on both sides, so we have this patient lined up pretty well. We'll go ahead and collimate. And uh, we're taking digital film, so we're using a 10 by 12 cassette. So we'll collimate in a half inch on the top of that 10 by 12, and we'll bring this one in until we come to the R marker. The R marker would be set right here, and we'll bring it right to the R marker. Okay, now, we said that we wanted to take this one as a stereo. So what we're going to do, once we have the patient all lined up, if we were to shift the tube this way, we would cut off a side of the head with the collimation. So we don't want to have that collimation all closed down at this point. We'll go ahead and loosen up our shift knob. And the shift knob I'm talking about is back here. And we've just loosened that up. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pull the tube to the patient's right. And as we pull it to the right, it hits a detent and stops. That brings the vertical crosshair over a certain distance this way. Now we need to make sure that the collimation field does not crop off part of the patient's head. So we'll just collimate in until we get to that 10 by 12 border and come in a half inch. And our top borders are where they need to be. Now when I place a cassette in the bucky, that cassette will have in lead letters on it, stereo right shift. 
So the cassette has stir and right shift. We have shifted toward the R on the bucky or toward the right side of the bucky. And now we instruct the patient, hold it right there, don't move. We make an exposure. We come back out. We take the cassette out and place a new cassette in that has stereo left because now we're going to shift the tube all the way back toward the left side of the bucky an equal distance and now we take another shot. Once we've taken that shot then we can remove that cassette. We have two cassettes, one with stereo right, one with stereo left and those two go into a stereo view box to view in 3D. Okay, that was the right protractor taken at 28 degrees and taken in stereo. What we'd like to do now is we'd like to take the left protractor. The left protractor will go ahead and place a flat cassette in the buggy. We'll go ahead and reset our factors for a flat view. We'll go ahead and turn the patient all the way to the opposite side because now we want to go through the nice ray sinus on this side and the TP on the other side. We determined that the condyle convergence for the left protractor view was actually 32 degrees, so we're going to turn the patient 32 degrees in conjunction with the head clamp. So the head clamp goes to 32 degrees, right there. We'll rotate the patient. The patient's still sitting in their proper patient posture. We'll try to get him matched up with the yoke and bring him in here until one shoulder touches, the closer shoulder touches. I might have to bring this out a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to match up the nearest shoulder with the ear pointer. And so on this one, I will bring my pointer in. It's pointing right at the posterior wall of the auditory meas, or in other words, the tragus, the tip of the tragus. I'll come over here, and where does this one have to touch? It also has to line up with the tip of the tragus, which it's doing right now. We'll get it out of the way. And uh, so we know we have the patient turned 32 degrees. I'll go ahead and loosen this up and bring this back a little bit so that these will line up more to the side of his head. And I'm ready to go ahead and take the tube. And I'd like to bring it in. If we hit that light, and I'm going to go ahead and look at my string, and I'm going to make my string, as I look at it eye level, pass through that, that uh, middle of maxillary sinus, the TP on the other side, so I'll just raise or lower accordingly, it's matching up fine. If I were to tilt it off and show you how I do this, I line up the string first, then I make a horizontal cross here and match my string, and that seems to be a more accurate way of doing it. Once I do that, where am I hitting the bucky? If I were open to, to open up my collimation, I'm seeing that I hit my bucky a little bit low. So I'll go ahead and raise my bucky, or lower my bucky, just a little bit. A horizontal crosshair going through the middle of the maxillary sinus. Have the patient just drop the chin just a little right there. Making sure that this point lines up with that one for normal head carriage. The ear pointers are pointing right. And I need to get my vertical collimator cross here to go through the proper points. I'll line it up on center because I had shifted it off, put it in the center detent, and now I need to move my patient parallel to the bucky until the vertical crosshair goes through the point that we have marked for that vertical crosshair point. So the patient is a statue, and they just go parallel to the bucky as we move them to one side. I am going to take out a little bit of tilt, so if this is straight up and down, make sure my vertical columnar cross here goes through that point, and then I'm ready to then bring that chin down just a little bit, clamp him in. Go ahead and get my ear pointers out of the way, and now I'm ready to collimate. I'll collimate top to bottom, half inch inside, my 10 by 12 border. I'm going to collimate into my R marker. There should be an R right there. Just drop that chin just a tad. Okay, so we have the ear pointers lined up on both sides, vertical collimator crosshair through the point that we need to go through. 
Horizontal crosshair through the middle maxillary sinus, TP on the other side, and this dot lined up with his normal head carriage dot on the chin. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and take this picture. Okay, hold it right there. Don't move. I make the exposure. I come back out, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and release the head clamps and let my patient relax just a little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and take out my cassette, change my cassette out, and uh, that is the protractor right and left, one taken as a stereo, one taken as a flat. Okay, go ahead and stop.